I'm joined now with Paul Diano, who is the author of Wow Weather. Paul isn't just a writer, though. He's also a five-time Emmy Award-winning broadcast meteorologist and currently works in Chicago. Hi, Paul. I'm so glad to see How you. Are you? Great. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm uh, yes. thrilled to be talking uh, with you today. Awesome. Well, I wanted to talk to you about your book. There's um, definitely a lot of weather books out there, but as a mom, I can tell you there's definitely not a lot of content written out there like your book. Um, I have a copy of Wow Weather thank with you. me, um, but for everybody who doesn't have a copy right with them at home, um, can you tell us a little bit about what this book is all about? Uh, yes. It, it, it's a book that the genesis of the book uh, was kids get really excited about the weather and what i found from visiting schools over the course of many different uh, markets and cities and many different locations was that i found that kids loved hearing one big number or one big fact you know if you're speaking with a, with a group of kids for 45 minutes you're kind of throwing a lot of information and talking about a lot of different things i wanted to kind of create a scenario where there's like one big number if they remember nothing but that one thing that would be something they can go home and talk to their mom and dad about. And, and after the course of many years of doing school visits, and that being one of the, my, my most rewarding things that I do as a broadcast meteorologist, I thought about compiling these stats and these wow um, information nuggets about weather into one thing like a pamphlet or a book. Um, one of the things that I love talking about is the weight of clouds. You know, a, a typical summertime cumulus cloud can weigh as much as two million pounds, which is a really big number, um, but there's no reference point to that. How much is two million pounds? What is two million pounds? It, it, it's, it, we know it's a lot, but is there a way that you can explain that to a young child and a young learner in a way they'll get? Well, I researched how much an elephant weighs. An elephant weighs about 20,000 pounds. So doing some simple math, you could say that one puffy summertime cumulus cloud weighs as much as 100 elephants. And I think that's a visual that a five or a six or a seven-year-old child can relate to. And then you get into some pretty fun science. It's like, okay, well, clouds are floating, but elephants certainly don't float. So how could a cloud weigh as much as 100 elephants? So I, I think my book, while whether um, the original book is kind of an aggregation of fun, exciting, and kind of wow weather moments that that kids will be like wow i didn't realize weather was that big or weather was that unique or lightning was that hot or the sun was that big because i talk about how this how big the sun is relative to the earth it, it's one of those things where i wanted it to be something that you know kids are reading and saying wow but it might be something that a parent would would read and be like wow i didn't know that either and, and this is kind of an aggregation of those wow weather moments. That's the name of the book and the title of the series. Well, you definitely t take those big numbers and break them down in an applicable way. And you have a lot of great visuals in there as well. And you wrote this, per this book in the perspective from the child. Um, yes. Was that intentional or what was the purpose behind that? I wanted this book to be different from all the other books that were out there. And it, it's, it's a crowded market. Lots of very smart people are writing lots of great material. And in, in a world of Amazon and in a world of um, independent publishing, I wanted to try to think of a way for my book and my product to be a little bit different and maybe stand out versus other books. Um, not that other books are wrong, but I think there is maybe a different way to present similar information in a unique way. So one thing I wanted to do was, was to intentionally write it to a younger audience. I see a lot of weather books out there that might not be appropriate for a four or five or six year old child because it's a little too technical for them. So that my book intentionally is quite basic and is something that I think even a very young learner could, could absorb some of the information. Uh, also, like you had mentioned, um, it was intentionally written from the child's perspective, almost like they went to talk with their favorite meteorologist at school. Maybe they were visiting the school and they had that 45 minute weather chat and they were so excited to run home and tell their mommy or tell their daddy or tell their Nana about what they learned. You know, the book is written as if the child is explaining the weather rather than the adult explaining it to the child. And I think that makes for a unique product. Why do you think it's important for kids to understand some of the weather terms mm -hmm. and the facts that you break down in your books? I, you know, one thing I tell students, uh, I always put this on one of my, uh, I give them an outline to take home and show their family when uh, the day of the school visit is just go outside and look up. 
you know, I think weather, even on a sunny and 70 degree day when nothing apparently is going up, nothing is going on weather wise, there's so much you can learn just by stopping, listening and looking. I mean, I, I, I encourage anyone who's interested in meteorology or weather or science, just go outside your front door and look up. There's a whole world of weather around you. And I think that when young learners grasp the power and the energy and kind of the majesty of weather, that I think it helps them understand you know, a lot about our planet. It helps them understand a lot about science. Science is more than just you know, formulas you write down on a sheet of paper. No, this is stuff that's impacting your body right now. Weather is impacting your day right now. Uh, it's always impacting you. I, I, I think um, if it opens the door to the wonders and the joys of learning about science and STEM education, and, and maybe weather is one of those portals, you know, some people get intimidated by hard math problems or get intimidated by, oh, man, I got to take physics or I got to take this or I got to take that. No, there's just there's just a wondrous world of the impacts of science and the impacts of mathematics uh, in your life that maybe weather is one of the best portals to get kids charged up about it. And I love that so much. And I know, Paul, you do a lot of school talks and school visits. Um, what has been the response from the schools and the families who've gotten to use your book as a learning tool? It, it has been wonderful. It has been an absolute blessing. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to do about writing and publishing a book was, you know, I'm one person, I'm one broadcast meteorologist. I can't be everywhere all the time. I can only visit so many schools between newscasts on so many days. There's a finite amount of places where I physically can be. But when you have a book and you have something tangible that could be mailed or that could be used in a place even where I'm not, then you can expand the reach. And it's not really even about selling books. To me, one of the coolest things is getting kids excited about science and STEM education. Um, kids are so impressionable, first grade, second grade, third grade. It's just fun to see that maybe the material that I've written and the material that I bring to a school visit can be part of the reason why a child loves math more or loves science more. And I can think back to when I was in third or fourth grade, it was a tour of a television station back in the Philadelphia television market um, that kind of paved my career path at a very young age. And now it's getting to the point this book's been out for a couple of years. I've heard back from a couple of kids who I visited who were in fourth or fifth grade. They're now making some choices in their high school classes or joining meteorology clubs uh, in their towns. Um, and it, it's, you know, may, maybe their love for meteorology blossomed just a little bit more because of wow weather. And, and that's the legacy I want from, from these books. Oh, I fully believe that their love of weather has blossomed from what you've written. You made it so um, accessible and applicable to kids. And so we want to thank you for that. Um, Paul, did you have an interest in weather when you were a kid? Maybe the ages that you've written this book for? Really interesting story. And it's going to be a, a unique answer. The answer is no. Uh, the answer is no. I was, a, uh, I was a sports photographer when I first got into television. And I kind of worked behind the scenes. I was a teleprompter operator. Um, and did kind of more of the technical side of things um, and then worked my way into broadcast. It turned out that my opening was in broadcast news and I became a news reporter and news anchor. I can tell you because a lot of meteorologists and television, maybe yourself included, can think back to one event that was kind of the why on the road and after that tornadic outbreak or after that snowstorm or after that hurricane, it's like, I'm in. I want to do meteorology. Mine was at a later age. Mine was when I was I was 21 years old working in Medford, Oregon, and there was a large hailstorm. And this is back pre-internet. This is in the mid-90s, back before the internet. Everybody knew everything all the time so quickly on Twitter. Um, and the phone calls started coming in. And just seeing the impact of one hailstorm and the damage it did, but how weather impacts, a big weather event impacts everyone everywhere just captivated me you know a news story might impact this subset of the population or this subset of the population but weather has the ability to impact not only your day but what you do or don't do throughout the day and i didn't realize the power of weather until that point and i went back to school uh, for broadcast meteorology from that point forward so uh, i had a different path than many folks in the meteorology industry um, 
um, was a news anchor first and then uh, pursued weather later in life. So uh, kind of a different story than most. Well, Paul, you have some Texas ties. I know you previously worked at a station in San Antonio, mm -hmm. um, as well as along the East Coast in Philadelphia, West Coast Seattle, uh, tropical life with your time spent in Miami. Uh, did all these places that you've lived play a role in the topics that you've picked for the books in your series? That's a great question, and the answer is yes. Absolutely, that has influenced uh, what I've done. I, I've had the I've had the the pleasure of forecasting a lot of different types of weather, and and I think maybe that experience I don't want to call it expertise I'll call it experience um, that experience has helped me um, maybe get a little more diverse in my books because I do have a book about snow and do have a book about hurricanes and a Spanish version of our main Wow Weather book. Um, yeah, the, the, the places that I've worked have certainly influenced uh, what I've chosen to write about. Yes. Step us through some of the other books that you have. I know because this is just one in the series. You kind of mentioned mm -hmm. them before. There's snow, there's hurricanes. What are some of the other topics that you touch on? Yeah, if you would have told me 10 years ago, 15 years ago, <laughs> I would be sitting here talking about books that I wrote. I, I, I thought you were uh, crazy. But this, this is fun. This has been a great, it's been about going on a five-year adventure now. Uh, the original book, I'll try to hold them up. Uh, this is Wow Weather. Uh, this is just kind of a compilation of all different kinds of weather. Once again, intentionally written to a younger audience. I would say ages three through nine. But I kind of my target audience is kind of kindergarten, first grade, where I think they have enough rudimentary knowledge to be a sponge and absorb the information. But it's not so far-fetched or not so advanced that you lose them. Because I do think there is some weather text out there that's much more geared toward a middle school audience or a high school audience, and that's perfect for them. Uh, what I'm writing is not for them. I'm going for a younger audience, a little bit more of a basic level. Uh, after that, we have Wow Weather Snow, which is an aggregate of information, but it's just talking about snow. And, and I really love that book, and I love talking about that in Chicago in the wintertime because we get a lot of snow here. Uh, wow, weather, wow Weather Hurricanes. I wanted to write this. Uh, I had worked in Miami, and, of course, I worked in San Antonio uh, in South Texas. I'm amazed at how one single storm can, can alter the landscape of an area or how one single storm can force everybody to make decisions about evacuating. We're talking millions of people. That might be more the Corpus Christi's or the Galveston's or I actually visited Galveston for a special report and just seeing some of the pictures of what uh, the Galveston hurricane of 1900 did is just unheard of. Hurricanes are so powerful and so strong, but sometimes I feel like the, the media, we throw out a lot of information and if you're a five or six year old absorbing that information, it can be kind of scary. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a resource where if a child asked about, you know, mommy, daddy, Tell me more about it. Where can I, what can I learn more about hurricanes? I wanted to present information in a way that they can get without having fear. Because I think sometimes you fear the unknown more than you fear the known. So I think if a child learns more about what makes a hurricane, what goes into a hurricane, talk a little about the hurricane hunters, talk a little bit about storm surge. Yes, they're serious meteorological events and they, and they can be life-threatening but if you can explain it to a young child in the proper way and in the proper tone the fact that they're informed i think actually removes fear rather than adds fear so that that was kind of my goal with wild weather hurricanes and then the last line in it was just reminding them that stuff isn't important and property isn't important you are and then the last line that's a picture of a family evacuating because if there's a hurricane warning and you live near the water it's, it's time to evacuate uh, if your house is near the beach, you may need to leave, that's true, but your house isn't the most important thing. What's most important is you. I wanted to remind kids that read that, that you know what, as long as you're safe, everything's going to be okay. Something might happen to your house, something might happen to your property, something might happen to your town, but I want to make sure that you and your family are safe, because people are the most important. Um, there's a Spanish version of a book, which I, which I don't have right now. Uh, there's a coloring book, which is just kind of fun to color for younger kids. This I just released a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is called Wow Weather Space. I love this because I was an astronomy minor in college and have always loved astronomy. This gets into uh, some of the unique features of each planet. Um, one fun thing when I go on school visits is that, uh, you know, Mercury circles the sun four times when Earth does it once because Mercury is closer. Its year is shorter. But that means um, a kid who's five years old is technically old enough to drive on Mercury because they're 20 years old on Mercury. So that's, <laughs> that's you know, we have, a, we have Blake and his dog Astro uh, driving on Mercury because they're old enough to drive, even though they're only five on Earth. 
And then we talk about finding, um, finding ice, digging for ice on Mars. And then one of my favorite illustrations that Toby, who's a great illustrator, has done was um, Blake and Astro uh, ice skating on Saturn's rings. So it, it highlights each planet and even puts a little shout out for Pluto, which has been uh, exiled to a, a dwarf planet. But we still put Pluto on there because Pluto has that beautiful heart shape on, uh, on it when, um, when the probe went by about six years ago. So Wow Weather Space is the latest one. But it's been really fun, and um, I'm just so thankful to uh, have had the opportunity to, to write some books. Well, and you do it in such a way, too. You read the last line of your Wow Weather Hurricane book where it has that cadence where they rhyme. And so I think that's a good way for kids to remember, too, some of the information that could be um, not an easy bite-sized piece of information if you didn't have the rhyming scheme. So I think that's very Thank clever you. that you that you were able to, to conjure that up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's like, sometimes it's like I would write the word down I'm trying to rhyme, and I'd sit there for couple hours it's like okay what's the right word to rhyme with and i'd write it and be like that totally doesn't work <laughs> so uh, it's 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 i'm not a writer by nature um guy kind of have more of a math brain i've always been a numbers guy um so this has been a challenge but sometimes you got to work through your weaknesses um that's where you that's where you can kind of find the most growth so once again he told me i'd be a writer i'd <laughs> shake my head i can't believe i'm actually talking about <laughs> Well, I love that. I think that's too for kids listening too, just to see your dedication and you powering through that and doing the things that you thought you never thought possible. That just shows that you have the willpower to do that and they can do it too. And I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And Paul, I know you Thank said you. you just released the Wow Weather Space, um, but do you have another book in the pipeline as well? You, I know there's lots of topics we could cover here. The, you know, what? one thought that I've had in my mind, and, and this is something that I may look into in the future is getting a little bit more specific geographically, uh, maybe a wow weather Texas or maybe a wow weather California, a uh, one that gets a little bit more site specific. Um, there are uh, obviously other weather elements. You could do a wow weather tornadoes. I mean, my brain, sometimes if I sit and think about it, can get my brain can get really full of ideas, but sometimes that's not good because then you don't focus on any one. Um, one thing that's really jumped out to me would be kind of the geographical uh, let, let's focus on Texas's weather, just how unique. I mean, gosh, you go from Amarillo to Brownsville, uh, you can have four different climates. You can go from you know 25 degrees in snow to 85 degrees in sunny in pretty short order, all within one state. Um, so I, I think that might be the next iteration of wild weather. Um, I'm just really enjoying, I mean, most of my energy is devoted toward the original book because I just think that's just a wonderful, that, that's the door opener. I, I think for a kindergartner or first grader, it's like, wow, I didn't realize weather was this big. I didn't realize lightning struck Earth that many times a day. I didn't realize that, um, you know, that a cloud weighed that much. I mean, I, I, I think if, if my book can answer a few things, but get a kid curious to where they're asking far more questions than my book could answer, then it's done its job. Because I think science is all about curiosity. That's fantastic. And Paul, I know we can grab a copy of your book. I know I've got some ordering to do myself either on Amazon or on your website. Um, can you tell us if there's any other places to get your book? Yes, uh, barnesandnoble.com uh, does carry it. I believe Target carries it. Um, Amazon is just, it just has positioned itself as the, I would want to say the simplest resource to get it to the consumer the quickest. And that's where we do see the majority of our sales. Um, but Barnes & Noble is a wonderful place. I know that some Barnes & Nobles stock it throughout the country. Um, I'm not sure which specific ones. They don't tell me, which is kind of a bummer. But um, uh, And I believe there are a few schools in El Paso. They actually use the Spanish version of the book for their kindergarten curriculum, which has been great. I get an order from one school district in El Paso uh, almost every year uh, for the Spanish version of the book because I wanted to expand it to a... Um, to not just an English speaking audience. Uh, there are many folks who want to consume science information that speak other languages aside from English. So I wanted to open that up to the Spanish community and I'm planning on a Spanish version of Wow Weather Space uh, sooner than later as well. That's awesome. I know we're ready for Wow Weather Texas. We'll be uh, distributing <laughs> that one out like crazy. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Well, Paul, thank you so much for your time and for talking with us and for all the work that you're doing. And we can't wait to see the books that you continue to release in the series and otherwise with all of the great work that you're doing. Awesome. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you having me. Thank